So we had three games with over 550 yards total offense. How about that? Tyler Jones with 23 told you. Where's Streeter in here? He told Streeter that Tyler would have 20 catches. Was that right? Yeah, Just need one more, huh? Well, one would have been, yeah. One would have broke it. That would have been Jerry Rice. He was a one by the way. Oh, really? Well, that's great. Well, let me start off with just some comments here. Uh, um, first of all, um, you know, we played with a tremendous amount of emotion, and I think that that emotion led to us getting a few penalties here and there, but that emotion also led to us to be able to play great offense, great defense, and really great special teams, given that they have Antonio Brown. And interestingly enough, before the game, about 23 minutes before we kicked off, the, the, the uh, guy started drawing a little bit, and Coach Jones kind of came after one of our coaches. And, and, and said, uh, um, Coach Bias, um, you, uh, I know you guys are out of a job, and I'm not going to help you, okay, with a few explicatives turned in there. So that totally got our players and our coaches just extremely excited to go out and play some tough football. So, uh, um, you know, we, we have spent the better part of the year trying to nurse Andy Schmidt back to health. And because of the 21-day layoff between Western Michigan and uh, Temple, uh, he was able to be healthy. And so this is the type of offense we wanted to do, really, since uh, October 1st, but we're unable because of the injury he sustained before the Toledo game. Our receivers obviously played very well, but you can't say enough about our offensive line. How many sacks did we have? One? Sacks. So you really wanted to play with uh, five receivers? Special yes, that was, here. yes, that's we wanted to do that. We felt that. Once we played Bowling Green and beat them at the end, two minute, we really felt that's how we could make plays, but we could never get to the point where we would practice it. So the injuries, and then Kyle McMahon, our, our backup quarterback, was hurt. So I don't see sacks on here. Um, I only one. Uh, Jeff, this has been your intent, obviously, since you've been here to you know, play this pinball style and everything. Did, have you seen a game like this, though, just the back and forth, even in all your years? Well, probably only the 2004 Central Michigan game or the 2000 Michigan versus Northwestern game where it was just back and forth. Now, um, invariably, uh, our game against Michigan was much more run, you know, probably 40% run, 60% pass. Uh, the same thing really with the Central Eastern game in 2004. This one, we really felt that Andy Schmidt's a special player and we wanted to put the ball in his and Tyler Jones' hands as much as we possibly could. Um, because you know they've worked so hard and you know what it's interesting the guys who worked the hardest were able to get the rewards along with our offensive line again i can't see a sack on here anywhere by uh anybody oh no two sacks i'm sorry so you know 80 attempts two sacks i'll take that ratio all the time um any questions so you just showed a lot of emotion today more than i've ever seen you uh Well, I just think that, uh, you know, um, in many times I, use, I will show that level of emotion, but uh, this was obviously a special game for our seniors. A lot of the seniors we brought in in our first year. So Tyler Jones, Josh Hunt, a few other guys, they came in almost a few months after we got hired. And so it was a very special day for them, along with the fourth-year seniors like T.J. Lang and, and those type of kids. So it was a great uh, Great emotional event, and obviously uh, it was it was fun for family and friends. What were your thoughts as the game finished? Uh, just uh, you know, just an overwhelming feeling of gratitude for the players, the coaches, um, for my family, and just a great opportunity to finish on the right way and do something. You know, very few people get a chance to to, to do something like this to be a Division One coach, but then also to have something like beating your arch rival four out of five years and not having them beat you in regulation in five years is really really special. So to be you know one win, I'm sorry, two wins and one loss against Brian Kelly and two and zero oh against Butch Jones, that's pretty good company. So uh, you know that's been. Our objective is to really have a great rivalry with Central Michigan. And obviously, by winning those games, we hopefully have instilled that in this institution for a long time. There was still some discussion between you and Butch as you're going off the field. Uh, what was, what was well, he, he just said, I thought you had more class than that. And I said, Butch, you know, you started it with your comment to, uh, to Coach Bias. But, you know, Butch runs a great program. And, uh, 
you know, it was just an emotion of a rivalry week. You know, you see it all the time, Texas, Texas A&M last night. Um, you know, Florida, Florida State coming up tomorrow. You know, guys know each other, uh, and it's really important to, to play with a lot of emotion. And so uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was at the beginning with about 24 minutes left before the game. Well, I think I'm most proud of the fact, first of all, that we've had 59 months without a publicized off-field incident. You know, in our first month, we had seven guys in jail, okay? And we've went 59 months without any issues. In conjunction with that, our NCAA academic progress report has went from 913 in 2003 all the way up to 959. We're one of the few MAC schools that has not lost a scholarship from, for their football program because of poor academics. So those two things are the things I'm most proud of. The fact that seven of my assistant coaches stayed with me for a full seven years, which is unheard of at this level. So we had great staff continuity. We all live in Ypsilanti, and we were really in it for the long haul. Um, so those three things are significant. Obviously, to uh, have played 10 games versus Western Michigan and Central Michigan and to be uh, six and four in that, I think that's the all-time um, Eastern Michigan record. We're very proud of that. Any regrets at all? Absolutely none. What do you think needs to happen to someone to be more successful, I guess, than you were here? Um, you know, I just think you just got to you know, keep working and keep developing players. It takes a long time to, to turn something around. I mean, the record for Eastern Michigan from 1990 to now is 61, or now 62 wins and 152 losses in one tie. So obviously there's some systemic issues that I'm sure the uh, upper management of the organization are attempting to address. What was the hardest thing as a uh, VA coach over the summer? Um, you know, just really trying to change the mindset, to trying to change the paradigm of how young men think, especially in close games, and being able to execute on just that particular play and controlling your unconscious mind so that you're not drifting back to all of the negative history over the last two decades. Do you believe you left it better than you came? Absolutely. Next thing you do you have an idea? Well, I just got uh, the news on Monday, so, uh, uh, you know, I really love coaching. Coaching's in my blood, so I would really like to be able to continue to coach. Um, but I also am blessed because I have an MBA from Northwestern and a master's from Western Michigan and, and 10 years of business experience, so we have a lot of options. And, you know, I've had the opportunity since uh, 1992 to chase my dreams. And um, maybe it's time for my children and my wife to chase theirs. All right.